you go down there, you go to Canada Coombe. It's, there's the Roman road carrying on up there, all the way to Bleedon and things like that. He's got a lot of dogs with him, this bloke has. So he's coming down, he's got three dogs with him. Got an orange top on. And this is the bridle path, which is used by many people. And this is a part of the West Mendip Way. I first came on this path many years ago in the... It could have been about 1989, something like that, or even 88. It was one of those years I came here with the Army Cadets. We were doing the, the um, Save the Children walk. Um, 22-mile walk from uphill to Wells, W-E-L-L-S, raising money for Save the Children Fund. I never came back here again for a couple more years when I walked it again with the nurses at Musgrove Park Hospital where I trained as a nurse. And we raised money for leukaemia, but we only did half the walk. We just came from Winscombe and walked back to uphill. So, and then once I'd retired, and uh, I, I think I didn't have a vehicle, I couldn't get away so easily for about six years, a bit like I am now, I started to explore the local area. And uh, so while I was exploring this local area, I came across the bridle path again, and I've been coming here ever since. It's very pretty. All year round it's pretty. It's peaceful. But like I said, there's somebody following now with three dogs. He was in a grey van. And he's got an orange top on, and a hat, and other clothes. Um, I'm just making observations of people, really. It's fresh in your mind. You just as well. We live in a very dangerous world. I mean, in Nottingham the other day, two Nottingham University students got stabbed to death. They all done their. The, the, the boy came from Taunton. He was 19, and she was 19. The girl. And uh, they'd been out celebrating, obviously done exams. They completed their first year at Nottingham University on a night out. I believe it was that it was a night out because other people got killed as well the same day or, and badly injured. And uh, I'm just saying how awful it is. Now Nottingham University, I know it well. Um, I've, walked, I've also known the Jerusalem Inn, the pub in the cave. It's supposed to be one of the smallest pubs. I'm not sure that could be um, Bury St Edmunds. Yeah, I used to attend Nottingham University in summer schools when I was doing my biochemistry degree with the OU. And, um, you know... I used to, we stayed there for a week at a time. I went there several for several years. I used to go there to get the laboratory experience, do experiments and all that sort of thing. And we stayed in the halls of residence. So I've always had like a little soft spot for Nottingham because of that. What I'm set going back to why I'm talking about it is because there's been so much violence. I mean, anyway. I'm going to turn off now. We're along the bridle path, heading on the West Mendip Way, heading for Loxton. Then eventually we'll get to Crooks Peak. I'm not going up the peak. No, I'm not going up the peak. Today I'm going to do a slight bit of exploring because I know there's a path by the Webbington Hotel that goes the other side, which I've never done. Or if I have, I've forgotten. I just hope it's not overgrown. Do you know what I mean? 
Um, otherwise, I'll end up on the road walking to uh, Compton Bishop. Because um, Compton Bishop is nestled in the arms of Crooks Peak on the other side of the peak. So that's where I'm aiming for, Compton Bishop, to have my picnic at the church there, St Andrews. It's a lovely place. It's very peaceful. Um, over and over, folks. See that? That's uh, Banwell Hill Fort. It's the first time I've really taken it on board from this particular standpoint. Now that I get, I've explored all these areas. So we're now on the, we're continuing on the West Mendip Way. I came the opposite direction last time. The good thing about doing this today is I'm going downhill. There's a great big hawk there just gone by. Big sparrow hawk. Don't think it was a peregrine falcon. Massive thing. It could have been perched, heard me come in and flew off. It could have been perched in that tree right there. So that's that Sheena coming again. I'll just do a little bit. I haven't, you know, I haven't even WMV'd two of the last big walks yet. And one lot haven't had clarity, light and colour done either. I would thought the West Mendip walk for charity should be happening soon, I would have thought. So here we go, it's a slight incline at the very start. And we've got the woods to protect us from the heavy sun for quite a bit of a while. So that's another good reason to have done this now. Because later that sun will be up there. Yeah, I don't feel, I might feel worse later at the moment. I fit a lot of these big walks in the summer, if you have to. Well, the weather's okay. It's not always the weather, mind. It's the length of time it takes me. And, you know, it gets, in the winter it can get dark early. So, and it is nice coming out when all the summer flowers are out. It's green. Uh, there's something beautiful about the winter, mind. Now I just stopped back there, have a banana. I've got a bounty in my pocket, I'm going to have a bit later. Not too long because it'll melt. I always eat the chocolate first. And the banana, they go funny when they get hot. I don't tend to bring bread. I used to bring bread and jam at one time and cheese. And pickle sandwiches but the bread gives me really bad indigestion so does the cheese now I probably won't eat the cheese <sighs> I'd love to eat it at Compton Bishop Church I might have half there because after that I've got a whacking great hill to climb <sighs> and I've just remembered because I'm not doing the other side of Crooks Peak I won't be going down that drove, but I can walk up it, like I did before. I did a, found another walk last year. And, uh, oh, and I didn't check the time then. I ain't checking the time until I either get to Loxton Church, or before that there's some lovely little benches where I will definitely stop. See, when I was younger, not that much younger, I never stopped at all. I would never sit down. I started to do it more now. <laughs> Bailing up already. Harvest comes all year round now, you know. 
You know, years ago it was always August. They've bailed up before the storm. They've been talking about this storm for weeks and we haven't had it yet, not here. So we must be building up for it. So this is Sheila on the 16th of July, no, June 2023. The day before one of my granddaughters is 17, on the 17th. Right, just going to take a picture. I'm going to turn off for a while now. Because I've done this so many times. I'm really over and enjoying out. this. All the different parts of nature. I mean, look at these. They're like miniature dandelions. You know? And that lovely path I've come down. <coughs> and I'm in the shade, folks. I won't always be in the shade, of course, as you know. When I have to cross over the bridge where the motorway is, that is going to be baking there. <coughs> Up stretch. And I'm going to do a bit of exploring, but I can't remember if it's going to be overgrown or not. But I've been wanting to do it. I've got a feeling it was very overgrown. I had to turn back last time. <coughs> Which is a bit of a pain in the arse then, because that then means I've got to climb up Crook's Peak. The, the other side, if you know what I mean. Uh, it doesn't matter whatever happens, but I don't like really want to do too much diversion. Ah, oh, there's a little group of daisies there, look. Anyway, I've put this spray on. It's got no DEET in it. DEET is the, one of these very permethrin, quite poisonous substances, but used to be allowed to go on your skin, and I still use it. It's the one thing that kills a tick, just like that, and a horsefly. Um, so I've put some on. It wasn't spraying very well. Now, I got another set of stuff, which I've left at home. It's 50% DEET. And that was quite potent when I put it on my knee. Some squirted out, and so I didn't waste it. I put it on my knee last night. And that's a gel, and the gel is a lot easier to put on than these sprays, which you don't know what you're going to inhale out of, do you? Crook's Peak, look, we'll be going near there soon. We've just come down this lovely walk, which is it is going up all the time, and when you come this the other way, it seems to take forever going up. Especially if we've already had a big hike, which is what normally happens. Anyway, that, I think it was cost about four quid for that spray stuff I've got. It's supposed to last a week if you use it for every day for a week. But don't say how many sprays it's got, see? Because if you're doing your legs, your arms, your back, back of your neck and all that. The only reason I've put, bought some is because I've got, um, I, I counted at least 12 ticks on me from the walk I did the other day, where I was going through undergrowth. Um, I was exploring over at Dolbury Warren, and um, to tell the truth, it was quite um, quite a lot. But I don't think they. Well, you, I can't say. I got rid of them. I killed them right away. I just put the permethrin on on them. I had to. I've had limes. You see, I caught it once, and they managed to. <laughs> sort me out really quick with antibiotics and doxycycline, doxyoxycycline and um, we stamped on it immediately but and that was because I had to go to the hospital for the, get proper treatment I mean, the doctors don't seem to believe in um, limes and then I had to really request the proper um, tests 
I mean, I know they're expensive, but the thing is, I, they did, it did prove positive. But because we got it quick, it did kill it. When I went back for a test later on, it had gone. <sighs> These are the things we talk about in the countryside in the summer. Occasionally you will see the odd tick sign warning people. Now the best thing to do when you get home, take all your clothes off. Before you have a shower, have a look round to see if you've got any that you can get off. Um, I'm still going to get a tick remover from a vet. Uh, one day, I keep forgetting to do it. I pass a vet every day. Before vets go out of existence, because apparently another dentist in Western is only taking, only doing private completely starting this September. So it's a good job I made my appointment in advance for March. I couldn't, I was hoping I'd have an appointment in September. Um, I didn't really want to get a toothache in the summer. But anyway. She said, you're safe if you make an appointment. Even if it is in March next year, you keep your place. So that's what I've done. And um, I just try and look after my teeth as well, as well as I can, really. I've got to have a blood test next week. That's for to check my vitamin D levels and my calcium levels. <coughs> I've never had a problem with calcium levels before anyway, so I don't really know what's going on. All I know is there's a lot of new drugs out that these doctors are being pushed to, to, to prescribe. Um, this is what happens when the drug companies want to flog it. They did it with the um, anti-cholesterol pills. They, uh, they pushed them for quite a long time, and HRT. Then all these side of people were getting all these side effects. So that's gone quiet for a bit. Um, so, you know what I mean? You just wonder sometimes, because I'm 71, they think, oh yeah, we can, we'll say she's got brittle bones. I had a scan done. I was quite surprised, but not surprised because of my age. I mean, it wasn't massively bad. It wasn't really high scores for like my bones are going to break if I walk. Anyway, I've got, oh, they, they say prescribe me some vitamin D, which I've wanted for ages. So I've been taking, I'm taking that to give myself a good boost, even though I'm out in the sunlight. I was always told that I have got one of those systems that can't always absorb vitamin D. Or can't process it or something. So, I don't know how true that is. So, like I said, this is what we discuss. It's just a reflective journal, right, and a visual diary. And that's what I remind people about. I remind them that if I'm talking about lots of stuff and they're not interested, well, they don't have to listen. But I've got lots of people who love it. You know? Same with the bumpy camera. I'm not the BBC. And if you don't like the sound and you just want to watch the, me walking along, you can turn the volume down, can't you? Over and out again for a bit.